Hello, I'm Debbie Crawford and this is Mary Beth Boone and we are here with a special guest that actually works with the regatta and several other of the racing uh, venues and that is... Kathy Lyon Spry. Kathy Lyon Spry. So we're very lucky to have her here with us. And some of the things that some people don't realize about this is you don't do just regatta. You are actually with the circuit, aren't you? Yes, I'm the coordinator, the medical coordinator for H1, so I follow the entire circuit. It's a, it's a really great job. Oh, I bet it is. It's like a vacation every time you go in. It is, and the people are wonderful everywhere we go, so you can ask for a better venue. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, how long have you been? The, you're actually a nurse. Yes. And that's your position with the H1, as you take care of the injured, if somebody's boat flips over or if they get hurt somehow during the races. Right, my background's in trauma, and I worked at the trauma center in Louisville, and so um, because of that, and I was a helicopter nurse for 15 years, so I've got quite a bit of experience in trauma, and that was one of the reasons why H1 asked me to come on board as their medical coordinator. So with that, um, I go to the sites and I work with the local medical teams as well as the H1 rescue director and the rescue teams of the local sites and in order to coordinate the care of all, all the drivers in case that there's an incident. Oh my goodness. Now, a lot of people don't realize that, that it takes more than just you to do that. You've got people that spot during the time there's an accident. They actually tell you what's happened inside the cockpit and different ways? Yes, um, with, as anything with medicine, you, it always takes a team effort. Right. So we have, uh, we work closely with the crew chiefs, um, with the teams themselves, and um, all, of course all the drivers we know real well, and then also uh, the locals, the local, um, whether it's rescue, the medical, their physicians on site, their EMS on site, right. work with all those to coordinate to make sure that everybody knows what's going on, what's needed when by the time the driver gets off the water. Oh my, that takes a lot of time. It's <laughs> so you can actually tedious. hear them inside, like when they're communicating you're actually involved in some of the communication. I don't talk to the driver, I'm mostly um, listening Bridges. to the rescue crews as they're coming off the water so that I know what to expect. I listen to their reports. Right. Right. And Kathy's been um, alongside many drivers and many accidents along the Ohio. She's definitely seen her fair share, I'm sure, of, of the good and the sad. And uh, she's just earned her wings, as I think, with this circuit and this crew. It's, um, it's been very rewarding. Uh, it's a fantastic group of people to work with, all the H1 drivers, crews, owners, uh, the officials. It's, it's just really a great group of people. And one of the things that we've found, uh, we've learned to depend on each other for information, for things that we need to better the sport. But there are so many safety features that have been added to the race boats throughout the years. That's great. And what that comes by learning, what worked and what didn't, and that's and that comes from the reports that you get when somebody does get injured. Yes, I, I will let them know if there's been something that um, appears to be a malfunction, maybe in equipment, or I will go back and ask about different things that may have been broken inside the cockpit so that we can kind of uh, pinpoint the, the rest of it's handled pretty much by the crew chiefs and, and all those people that work on the boats, but I just give them the information so that they can look into it a little further. Then they can tweak the equipment inside the boat to help yes. with the safety issues. Yes, there's a lot of safety issues on those big boats that people don't realize are there. The canopies are um, made from the F-16 canopies, yes. so they're very, very sturdy. There are roll bars that are put inside the cockpit to further protect the, the uh, driver. They have, of course, emergency air for when they go over, and they have escape hatch on the bottom. Um, yeah. Brace sites go through training to make sure that they know how to get the drivers out in a fast way. And um, the drivers go through dunk tank training so that they know what it's like to be upside down and get disoriented. Right. So there's a lot of things that go into it behind the scenes before it ever gets on the water. Oh, yeah. That, and one of the things that she was discussing in one of her accidents is she can kind of see what their cognitive, cognitive ability is right. after there's been an injury on those skill sets of whether or not they can unbuckle themselves on, on the preparation that it's gone in after the crash. So that's really interesting to know too. We've learned a lot from Kathy today. <laughs> Thank you. Now, some of the sometimes the injuries that you, you've seen over the years have been anything as simple as just maybe hurting a scratch or a cut and all the way to having to go to the hospital and being in trauma. Yes. Yes, so. we've had quite a variety of, of injuries throughout the years. Um, fortunately, um, the sport is 
it's a risky business, but yet it's um, got so many safe, safety features, like I said, that that's protected a lot of the drivers from very, very serious injuries. But yes, we've had a combination of some broken bones, um, some people who need a little extra uh, ibuprofen <laughs> <laughs> to the very serious of needing to go to the trauma center itself. Yeah. Well, what is your favorite place to visit when you go on the circuit? Well, of course, a... of course, I got involved in boat racing because yeah. of my own hometown, Mav Madison. <laughs> but um, I, I, I don't know if I could pick a favorite because when I go to the West Coast, it's it's very nice at every race site. They're just beautiful. Um, I am looking forward to going back to San Diego, though, because I'm going to SeaWorld and do Ooh. a little backstage <laughs> well, tour. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That will be nice. Yes. That'd be awesome. Well, you get to see so many wonderful things while you're, yes. you know, the, the boats are beautiful, the water can be beautiful, and then the relationships with the people at those sites, I'm sure that you've built over the years. It's just... It's very nice to have such a network of people to be able to contact and, and talk with. Yeah. And that's the neatest thing, I think, is, is the friendships you build during all this. Even after you retire, a lot of times you keep in touch with these people that you talk to every year on the circuit or, you know, it's just kind of neat. Yes, they're, um, they're like I said before, it's a fantastic group of people and they bec all become family. They may be competitors, but bottom line, they're all family when it comes down to it. They jump in and help each other. Right. Um, and when somebody has a broken boat versus somebody needs something, oh. it doesn't matter. Well, now, this year we have the regatta coming up. Yes. And do we have any races before that that you'll have to go take care of? Um, I think that there's still a possibility of an exhibition in the works. Or in, uh, that hasn't officially come through yet, but they are working on an exhibition possibly in Alabama. I don't know where that one is exactly yet. <laughs> um, and then, we'll, of course, we'll start out with the Madison race on yeah. July 4th weekend. Then it moves to the West Coast again, and we'll be in Tri-Cities at the end of July back to um, Seattle the following weekend, which is the first weekend in August. And um, then we come back to, let's see, that would be Detroit next. Yeah. <laughs> I had to stop and think where I was. Detroit will be um, the Gold Cup this year. Mm -hmm. So that'll be a nice return back to the Midwest. And then it'll finish out the season as it stands right now in San Diego in September, mid-September. Wow. And Kathy, what's the furthest you've ever traveled to one of these races? Doha, Qatar. <laughs> it, was, it was a wonderful trip. <laughs> I bet it was. I've seen some video from there and that's just a beautiful place. It's a beautiful place. Um, we were treated wonderful the whole time we were there and um, were able to take in some sights. I actually got to ride a camel so I thought that was pretty neat. <laughs> Neat experience. It didn't spit on you, did it? No. Oh, well, you're good. <laughs> they wear spit socks. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. What's the most unique place other than that, of course, but is there any other place or left a imprint with you? I think um, it's hard to, to pinpoint one down just because they are they all have their own unique things about the different race sites. One place has a special place you like to eat and another place has one you like to go visit or swim or... The viewing from some places are a little different. Than, well, they're all a little different. And right. so being getting used to the race course, being going, you know, looking at the mountains in the background versus the hills of Kentucky versus, you know... In San Diego. I mean, yeah. you have your variety of courses, mm -hmm. I'm right. sure. Yes. So, and it's a little bit more rough riding as you go out to San Diego some of those other places, I'm sure. But Mission Bay is a beautiful area of San Diego, so yes, it's all there. Well, now, we need to tell people about the website for the regatta. That is? Um, the Madison Regatta is um, madisonregatta.com. And um, the H1 website where you can find out about all the races is www.h, the number one, unlimiteds.com. And then they can find out anything they want to know from there. Yes. And go to each different. But the H1 um, Unlimited.com site will take you to every race course. It will give you information about it and give you a link to that race. Oh, wow. Well, you might have more participation. People might be flying out there. <laughs> I think they should. Boat racing is so exciting. I think for Madisonians, especially after the movie came out, yes. that yes. people can't even watch it at home, but it is something that, you know, inspires us all. Absolutely. And for Kathy to be alongside these crew members and, and just the friendships that she's made, 
is just everlasting. And I know there's a lot of people in the community that Kathy's been able to help through her other other curricular jobs that she does. <laughs> um, but she is just instrumental on the sidelines. And sometimes we forget, you know, while we're doing the boat racing, but it's also nice to know about the people that contribute so much and keep us all healthy and safe. And even if they're on the banks of the Ohio River, it's people like Kathy uh, Spry that are stepping up, you know, uh, with their time and their talents to contribute mm. to our one of our favorite activities of the summer in Madison. So I, for one, am very appreciative of what you do. Well, thank you. And, and you have to commend the people from the Madison Regatta as well for our local race because they have a lot of volunteers who spend a lot of time yes. preparing all year long to get ready for that weekend. And they do a phenomenal job. The fact that we've been able to keep it alive for so long, um, from the time we've had the Gold Cup, you know, and we're still doing it today in 2016, it just says a lot. I think it says a lot that we uh, recently just got the information that they would have the vintage boat races back in September. That will be awesome. Yeah. And that, you know, even with our river, the way it comes up here in Milton and Madison, sometimes it gets flooded out, which has only happened, what, twice? Yes. Twice, twice it's been. been which one was Maybe last year? Times. Well, three times because there was three one times. many years ago. Yes. And it still keeps going on. I mean, nobody gets discouraged. It's like, okay, well, we're just ready to get ready for next year. You got to regard it. Yeah. So, you just, yeah. I describe us as NASCAR on water when people need to understand a little yes. bit about those boats because we had one driver taken to the hospital and, and through all the different information, um, communication, and lack of communication that kind of went through. Uh, the doctors thought that they were driving a rowboat, <laughs> so we we were able to clarify that. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's yeah. that's a big discrepancy there. But now, and there's something unique about the drivers. If they do get hurt, there's one thing they do not want you to do, and what is that? That is to cut their suits. Yeah, don't don't cut the suits. If you cut their suits, you will hear about it for a very long time. <laughs> Are they super superstitious about the suits? Or? No, they're super. They're um, they're suits are so special to them because um, one a lot of times it's new suits they're no max they they have the protective things and they're expensive <laughs> so when they lose their good suit they have to wear their backup suits and they like their new ones so oh my well we really appreciate you being here with us today Thank you. this is wonderful thank you very much do we have anything else we need to cover no i just we just wanted to recognize yes. kathy she's just thank a you very special much. person in the madison community and she's also um you may see her at kdh mm -hmm. but she is a she is an outstanding citizen that we are lucky to have with us today so thanks kathy well thank you very much well thanks for watching you guys